Hey guys, and uh, welcome back. This is gonna be a follow-up video to the VW bus that was uh, 31 years left in a field. Uh, probably answer a couple of questions right off the bat that were kept getting asked on the other video. Was uh, the first of all, the bus was no good when it was parked. It wasn't like it was parked and it turned into what it is today. I'm sure it's much worse, but it was taken off the road because it was too rusty and it. We live in New England and unfortunately this is what happens to our vehicles. Second, uh, I am not going to restore this. This is a parts vehicle for a identical, identical bus that I do have right now that's out back that is in much better shape than this one. But uh, what it does have is all the little things that when you're putting one together, um, you end up chasing and, and nickels and dimes you to death. Anywhere from down like uh, reverse light bezels and. Uh, door latches and keys and window regulators and door handles and bumpers and uh, Westphalia hardware Doesn't look like much, but when you pick away at it, it does add up So what happened was I got the slider open. It was seized shut and it took some uh, prodding and beating like the other sections did and uh, it is now open We'll probably sweep this uh, monstrosity of a uh, squirrel's mouse nest and you know, any other kind of critter it looked like it was kind of living in here out of here and it will also get used as a shed for some storage parts uh, of VW origin the slider fell right off as soon as they opened it the bottom track is rotted right out of it you see it hanging so it's got one bar in the back still holding it and right now it's just sitting on a rim but we're going to shoot some oil up in the latch just so that we can open it up probably more than likely it's going to have engines stored in here You can see how it still has all the complete dash components in it, door panels. Uh, seats can be redone. Little things like the latches for the top. They all add up. So, again, uh, there's no real money in this. There was $200 in the purchase price of it. So, I will get that. Definitely get that out of it. Wiper motor. What I want to work on today is seeing if we can get the engine to run and stay consistently running. I had it just run on, running on the bottle, just uh, dribbling a little bit of fuel in it at a time, and it was running off of that, not running off the carburetor. So I think what we should do, maybe we'll set up some lighting, we'll get the carburetor out of here, we, uh, we'll see if we can get that to be resurrected, take apart, clean it. And uh, we'll put a fuel container, separate fuel can on the side. We'll feed the carburetor direct and see if we can get it to run and stay running and uh, uh, change oil to a couple other things. And essentially, we're just trying to do an ass uh, a assessment on the engine, see what kind of condition it's in, and uh, it will get taken out and torn apart and put back together anyway. But uh, we're just doing it to see what we got. So without further ado. Hey, let's see if we can get that carburetor out of there. I just dropped my wrench down through the grate. Throttle cable doesn't really matter because the pedal's broken on the other side. The pedal's just sitting on the floor. That's that guy. Should have two wires over here for the choke and the fuel shut off. They just take power right off the coil. They have 12 volts. So when the coil has power, it powers both of them up. And we got two nuts on the bottom that are 13 millimeter. And uh, this nice little S wrench definitely makes getting the back one. A lot easier. And I also took the uh, the cap and just unclicked it and put it to the side to give me room where my where my palm is right now. And we'll 
we open it up, we'll definitely tell the story of whether this carburetor is going to come back or not. It should be before, way before uh, alcohol was in fuel, so it may not have the issues that stuff I take apart that's five years old. But we're going to find out. So it should be ready to rock and roll right now. Come off of there. There you go. Let's get some kind of odd throttle return spring set up on there. That's not normal. But let's go take her on the bench. Go take a look. What do you say? I got it set up in the vise. Kind of help support it. Let's take the top off and see what we got on the inside for surprises. I don't think this is the original carb. There is another carb sitting in the bus itself, which is probably the correct one. But they probably had, that's got a nut and a bolt on it, so somebody stripped that out. Get that one in a second. Um, so, either this one or the other one we'll put together and we'll get one. And I'm sure I have one in my stash somewhere that uh, we could use in a pinch also. And again, we're not looking to make this to go run down the road, but we, we, I'd like to see get it up to speed and let it run and idle. And um, I want to, I'm not sure which direction I want to go yet. I don't know if I want to run it. A little bit change the oil get, get the crap to flow around it it looks real clean but uh, as other people were pointing out is the dirt over time will settle and when it settles the oil will look real clean but I don't want to change the oil and then spin it up and then have to change the oil immediately again afterwards so my inclination right now is the next time we go to out there I'll take the dipstick and um, we'll pull the dick stick out. If it's dirty, we'll change it. If it's still clean, we'll run it a little bit so that the, uh, again, the dirt gets suspended in it. Now it's got crud in the bottom, but I wouldn't exactly call that. It's got a lot of crud in the bottom. There's your carburetor. So, no fuel was gonna flow through that very easily. All right, so I'm gonna continue to probably disassemble this and I will soak it in the uh, cleaner. Let me go a little further. And we will come back to it and let it... Uh... You guys wanna hold that for me? don't look bad but that's no good and this is a idle shut off fuel shut off and what that does uh, the power goes to it cycles in and out and allows it to uh, shut the fuel off so it doesn't run on afterwards you know I grabbed the wrong one I'm going to tear that down. You guys don't need to watch that whole assembly. Maybe we'll turn it back on when we're putting it together. Yeah, turn it back on. So what happens is when you put 12 bolts to this, and this side is, of course, grounded, you turn it on and off, it opens a port between here and here. Or uh, when power gets disconnected to it, the plunger falls back out and blocks those two passages off. That's what that does. Some of the later ones have a plunger on the end of it. So now we're going into the accelerator pump. And what this does is when you give it the gas, it actually shoots a, a squirt of gas right down, raw gas right in it. And it helps it um, take off you know, without having a flat spot. Nine times out of ten, the diaphragms in these are 90% uh, of the carburetor issue other than having dirt in it. And that one. 
sounds rough. So here's that diaphragm. Still moves. I didn't say it moves well. It moves. I'm going to go search. And um, like I, I know I have a couple of carb kits, but usually that's the one component I end up stealing out of it all the time. supposed to be really pliable and that is not so you hit the gas this moves and sends a squirt of fuel out of that nozzle straight down and that is not going to happen right now <laughs> let's get rid of the uh, air fuel mix screw and after that I think we could shove the whole thing right in a tank should be one more that out. That's that nozzle. So that's going to go take a bath and I am going to go hunt for a carburetor kit. So like I said, I had two carb kits that I already sliced open and um, the ones that are in there are not much better than uh, what came out of the carb. That one's pretty much the same deal too. And this is the carburetor that was inside it the bus this is the correct one that should be on it which is a 30 pick three and i think the other one that we are soaking it's on the floor now is a 28 which is uh, for a much earlier car so this is actually the correct one but this is the one that was running on so i figured we'd go with that but if that fails that's back up all right so i decided to uh grab the other car and we'll go pop the top off of that one should have all the screws ready to rock and roll and we'll see if this one is in better shape. Yeah, I feel like white powdery stuff in it. Here. Watch your eyes. Yeah, I'd say it's probably got roughly the same issue. But maybe what we'll do is I'll clean this out as best as possible. We'll dump a little bit of fuel in it. We'll hit the throttle and we'll see if we get squirt squirt coming out of that. If that's the case, we just may go with this one. And move forward, kind of like uh, you watch a cooking show. And they uh, make something and they put it in the oven and they pull another one out that's been in there for 45 minutes. We'll do the same with this. I blew um, some brake clean, carb clean in there and then blew it out of there. Let's just dump a little. Enough to get under the accelerator pump. There we go. And let's see if that will prime for us. Took on air bubbles, that's a good sign. I would say that diaphragm is probably shot too. Right. Took the uh, nozzle out and uh, shot air through it and I got it to kind of blow through. Let's Magnet got me there. Let's see if we can get it to uh, bubble up out of the hole now. There we go. Got all the rust coming out of it. Let that kind of let that soak for a little bit. We'll let that uh, self wash. I am going to go pull a bunch of the screws out of this one. We're going to clean this one up and put it in, and uh, we'll go with this. I got that one back together, and there's fuel in the float bowl. Let's go and give it. See how it's shooting the fuel out underneath it when you're pumping the car and uh, trying to start it on an old carburetor. That's exactly what you're looking for. You're looking for that squirt coming out of it. So this one will do that. Uh, hopefully the rest of the carburetor will also uh, play well. Again, if this was something that was getting ready to put on the road, I'd tear it all down and uh, go through it properly. But we're just trying to uh, 
assess what we have and go with that. So I say this original carburetor should go back on there. Let's go out and see if she'll play. All right, so we got a battery on a battery charger. Carburetor's put back on. There's no throttle cable. I didn't bother hooking it up because the pedals broke, like I said, in the front, so there's nothing connected. Distributor cap's back on, and uh, no fuel is connected to it, but I did fill the float ball up. So I'm gonna give it a, a couple of uh, squirts and uh, see if that's enough for a prime. The choke is about halfway on. Again, the wire's not connected to that. Um, it doesn't seem like it was set up that it was working. That might have even actually been the original problem why it was changed. But let's give that a couple of shots. Let's crank it with the key and see if it'll go. We've got a gas can hooked up to it now. It's flooding over a little on the carb. I think the needle and seat might be a little uh, dirty. Let's see if. No. Yeah, let's give it another try. gas pedal. I smell a lot of gas. It's not me.
Not without the gas pedal. I let it run for, it's probably been running for about 5-10 minutes on, on and off. It's getting pretty warm. So I was shooting sparks from underneath it. And let's see what the oil looks like. Still looks pretty decent. So, I would say we could leave well enough alone until we're ready to use this engine in something. I'll get that when you guys are off camera. But I think the, the motor itself should be a survivor. And I said the trans was good too, and as long as uh, that fluid looks clean, there shouldn't have been any issues that happened to that either. So with that, I think guys, we're going to go wrap this up. And uh, I'm going to take a little bit of cleaning, clean some of this crap out of here. And we're going to get this one off the trailer for our next one. And with that, I'd like to thank all you guys so much for watching, comment, and subscribing. And I will see you later. And for those that want to see what that bus is going to be getting used for is this one in back Which is uh, beat up and banged up a little bit here and there. You can see a hit in the back bumper. It's got some rust But it's in much better shape than What was Out there on the trailer And this one was just last registered in 2003. I probably owned it since 2008 2010 right around there and I've been gathering parts for this one to get this one uh, reset and redone and again it's uh, driven here so it does operate it did operate and it will need a full restoration but it's in much better shape than the other one you guys saw and uh, this bus was full of parts I've been loading I've been gathering parts that swap means that's why it's all full of stuff all new seals whenever I get a chance to, to find and locate stuff I just put it in it so that when it's time to do them it's much cheaper instead of uh, going and buying all the parts outright and this bus was uh, a, a groupie who followed the band fish and uh, so she followed the band with this bus and then she had a boyfriend that followed the uh, band with his bus and then uh, they had a kid and then they both sold their buses and that's where I came along and I purchased it and uh, I'm a big fan of the uh, early Westies with the 1600s in it so um, that's why I own it and hopefully in the future it will be in the garage and get its turn and a little peek down the uh, passenger side. Had to repaint on it. Paint's a little darker. Should be the same color as the one that was out there. The more uh, lighter red. You know, that lighter red underneath. <laughs>